afternoon everyone. Do you want to hear a story? Today, we will be talking about the partner's tape. But before that, I want you to answer these questions as I go on with my story. Do you agree that greed is the root of all, all evil? story have for people young and old. How did all three young men die? Was their death justified? to report his name correctly. Sir, the boy said, I did not go up and find out. I was told who he is, who he is two hours ago. He is an old friend and companion of yours. He was slain suddenly last night, for as he sat drunk on a bench, there came a private thief whom men call death and whom in his country all men fear. With his fear, he smote your friend's heart in two. He has slain a thousand in this pestilence. And, Master, if you ever come in his presence, you must guard yourself well with such an enemy, for he is very powerful. Does boy speak true? The tavern keeper added. This year, he seems to have placed his habitation in a village a mile from here, where he has slain men, women, and children. Yah God arms! cried this wicked man. Is this death so terrible to me? I shall seek him in town, in hill. I swear by God that we three friends, acting as one, shall not rest until we have slain this death. Listen to me, fellows. Let us join hands and vow to kill this traitor, death. So the street roisterers joined hands to live or die in this adventure to be true to each other as if they were brothers. Then up, up the left, still very drunk, and forth they went toward the village of which the cupboard keeper had spoken, vowing that they would not rest until they had slain death. They had barely gone half a mile when they met an old man who greeted the tree very meekly, saying, My lords, God protect you. The proudest of the roasterers answered the old man rudely, Slave, why are you so wrapped up except for your face? And being so old, why are you still alive? The old man answered sadly, I am still alive because I can find no one, no man who will exchange places with me. And therefore, am I alive still as long as it is God's will? And death, alas, will not take my life. And so with my staff, I knock upon the ground for Mother Earth to open and let me in. So God be with you. I'll go away. No, old slave, you don't go away so fast. The young man said rudely, You are a spy of this traitor. Death, so tell us where he lives, this layer of you. Now, sirs, 
said the old man. If you really want to find that, turn off this narrow path, for in that grove I left him under a tree. For all your boast, he will not avoid you. Seek that oak tree, see that oak tree, you should find him there, unless you meet your ways. The three wicked men ran to the tree, and there they found a treasure of old boys. They promptly forgot about them, whom they were seeking. of the tree was the first to speak. Brothers, listen to me. Fortune has given us this treasure so that we can live the rest of our lives in eating and drinking. Who would have thought that today we would have such good fortune? But we must hide this gold in my house or in yours. But we cannot do so by day. Men would see us and say that we had stolen it and get us hanged. Therefore, let us carry away this treasure secretly by night. Now I suggest that we draw lots, and he who gets the shortest lot should go to town and bring us bread and wine while the two of us will stand by and watch this move. And tonight, we shall take this fortune where we think best. Then they draw lots, and the shortest lot was drawn by the youngest, who immediately went to town to buy bread and wine. As soon as he had left, one said to the other, You know that you are like my brother. I have a plan which will bring much more profit to us. much gold that should be divided among us three. Now, if you can bring it to pass, that it shall be divided only between us two, would it not be better for us? Yes, it would, said the other. But how can we do that when he knows that the money is with us? I will tell you, answered the other. When he returns with the bread and wine, we shall kill him, and my dear friend, we shall divide this gold between us. On the other hand, the one who had gone to the town also began to think how he could get the gold for himself alone. Oh Lord, he thought, if I could get all the treasure for myself, how happy I would be. And he planned to poison his friends so that he could have all the gold. He went to the apothecary and brought some poison, telling the man that his house was full of rats and he wanted to get rid of them. He borrowed two bottles in which he poured the poison. He then filled the bottles with wine and returned to his friends thinking how rich he was going to be. As he drew near, his friends killed him. Then they sat down to drink the wine. Thus ended the story of this three wicked young man. Did you like the story? What moral lesson can we get from the story? So, till next